Hi, Assalamualaikum everyone. My name is Wan Mardiana binti Wan Ayub. My metric number is 1200943. This video is for the subject SFT4053, Renewable Energy. Lectured by Professor Technologist Dr. Muhammad Iqman Izzam bin Haji Muhammad Isa. In this video, I will share with you guys about the policy, politics and public opinion on renewable energy in both Uruguay and Malaysia. Let's first proceed with Uruguay. Uruguay is a South American country known for its wooden interior and beach line coast. Uruguay takes this opportunity to shift its energy metrics from petroleum-based electricity to renewable sources beginning in 2005. Currently, Uruguay generates more than 98% of all electricity from renewable sources, primarily wind and hydropower with 99.9% .9 of homes connected to the electric grid. So, what really makes Uruguay one of the successful country for renewable energy? Let's go deeper into the energy policy of Uruguay. This achievement is aligned with the country's plan for renewable energy. Uruguay has a comprehensive, long-term plan with the overall objectives to diversify the energy matrix, reduce dependency on fossil fuels, improve energy efficiency and increase the use of endogenous resources, mostly renewables. 1. Auctions have been the main instrument for the promotion of renewable electricity in Uruguay. The government will award renewable energy projects to the successful bidders, who can provide electricity at the lowest cost. Fiscal incentives, the government provides income tax reductions for renewable electricity producers, renewable energy service providers and manufacturers of renewable energy equipment. Feed-in tariff. Feed-in tariff promotes electricity generation from biomass and a long-term payment rate is provided to renewable energy producers for the electricity they generate and feed into the grid. Net metering allows consumers who generate electricity from renewable sources such as solar panels to offset their electricity consumption and potentially receive credits for any excess energy they produce. Access to grid. Ensure renewable energy projects can access the grid, allowing them to feed the electricity they generate into the system. In terms of environment, all power plants over 10 MW require a prior environmental authorization and an environmental operation permit to reduce environmental impact. In terms of politics, generally, the country works with both private and public companies and also NGOs for electricity generation from renewable sources providing wide connections between Uruguay and other countries. During early years, Uruguay depended on two primary energy sources, hydropower and fossil fuels. This lack of diversification made Uruguay vulnerable to climate-induced stresses and oil price shocks. In 1997 to 2007, a series of major droughts affected the country's capacity to generate electricity. Therefore, government imposed severe restrictions on energy consumption and spent more than 2.8 billion US dollars a year on fossil fuels imports. In 2008, major political factions came together and agreed to secure energy security, avoid future crises and restructure the energy sector. The use of biomass, wind, solar or natural potential began. With support from opposition parties, government decided to embark on an international campaign to attract foreign investors, public-private partnerships. In 2019, Uruguay succeeded producing 95% of electricity from renewables. However, with the government shift on 2020, it became a concern since it was not really clear that the new governing party can maintain Uruguay's momentum in scaling up renewable energy. A cattle farmer, Guillermina Bula, said yes to renewable energy. The foreign investors who finance the wind turbines pays her as a rental income. The rental income is used to buy cattle, seed, and sheep, which moves her forward. Pablo Capiro, an agricultural engineer and a rancher, hesitated at first for renewable energy. After he traveled to Brazil to see the wind parks there, he got convinced and said yes to renewable energy. However, ordinary citizens still need to pay the price of the expansion of the renewable production which makes 15% of their monthly income is spent for renewable energy. Let's proceed with Malaysia. Malaysia is a developing country that demands more energy than other developed countries for its rapid economic growth. Primary source used in Malaysia's power sector for electricity generation are fossil fuels, 
which cannot be sustained in the near future with Malaysia's expanding population and economy. National Energy Policy NEP 2022-2040 covers both renewable and non-renewable sources. The Malaysia's action plans are 1. To enhance and unlock potential of solar resources. 2. Enhance and unlock potential of hydroelectric resources. 3. Enhance platform for businesses to access renewable energy which allows industries to offtake electricity from renewable sources through virtual power purchase agreement VPPA, arrangements. 4. To explore potential of new energy sources such as waste to energy and wind energy potential in specific regions. Power system advancement. Grid infrastructure and energy storage upgrades to support future energy mix with greater variable renewable energy penetration. Grid system connectivity. Establish grid connectivity between Sabah and Sarawak from the hydropower of Sarawak and leverage ASEAN power grid connectivity to explore electricity sales to neighboring countries. In terms of politics, despite Malaysia's potential to generate renewable energy, progress has been painfully slow in transitioning to a more efficient and sustainable energy mix due to unstable politics, which leads to several problems. 1. Uncertain policies. Political instability leads to frequent changes in government priorities. This disrupts the continuity and implementation of renewable energy policies, incentives and regulations. Data is unorganized and relatively scattered. Consolidation of the data for further usage becomes challenging and gives difficulties for researchers for further use and improvements. Frequent shifts in key leadership positions can result in administrative bottlenecks and slow down project approvals, permits and licensing. With no stable political environment, consistent policies and a reliable regulatory framework, both local and foreign investors for renewable energy projects may don't want to commit to long-term projects. From a study entitled Public Awareness Analysis on Renewable Energy in Malaysia, it can be concluded that Malaysia needs to work more in renewable energy. It shows that Malaysia citizens in both rural and urban areas are adequately informed about renewable energy. Even though most respondents prefer using renewable energy, the price of the technology for renewable energy is high reducing its affordability for use. Overall, majority of Malaysian are keen to support the government's efforts to emphasize the deployment of renewable energy. In conclusion, national agreements provide clear vision, coordination and stability in promoting renewable energy deployment. This drives the transition to a sustainable and low-carbon energy future. Awareness on the climate change forces people to find alternatives to overcome the issue. The introduction of clean energy brings people's interest towards renewable energy and nuclear power, which promotes investments for clean energy. Before I end this video, I would like to share the Islamic perspective on renewable energy. This verse originally teaches about how humans receive food from the plants and the obligatory of paying zakah or donating some of our earnings to the needs. This also can be understood as humans need to use their earnings reasonably. In our context, natural resources are abundant but, sooner or later it may be limited by the hands of humans if they do rapid consumption without considering future effects. Other than that, as we can see implementing renewable energy requires a huge amount of money so, we should use every opportunity we get really wisely otherwise it will double the original cost and cause waste of time and energy.